Information systems enable other business functions and are a source of competitive advantage. They drive efficiency, help differentiate products and services, and deliver time compression, enabling the organization to compete through speed of delivery. Chapter 42 explores the function of the IT department from a traditional perspective. Two key IT activities, systems acquisition and development, are explored in more detail. The final chapter discusses recent advances in technology such as cloud computing, big data, analytics and AI along with the concept of digital transformation. In part 3, we have focused on business functions and processes. Starting with the core functions of marketing and operations, we then moved on to consider human resource management and then finance and accounting, and we'll now focus on information systems and technology. Collectively, HR, IT and finance and accounting enable the core functions to deliver their products and services to the customer. This improves the customer experience, generates revenue and increases value. All of the functions contribute to the attainment of the organization's mission and generate sources of competitive advantage relative to rivals in the marketplace. Companies spend a great deal on technology, often around 3% of their revenue, and so it is important for them to make good investment decisions. Understanding what the technologies and systems are and how they're to acquire, develop, implement and make them work to the benefit of the organization is of importance to every manager. An information systems infrastructure is needed to support decision making, business processes and competitive strategy. This consists of hardware and computing platforms, system software and applications, operating systems, storage, network and telecommunication services including internet platforms, data management services and data centers for example. The enterprise wide infrastructure includes services such as email, the corporate website, company intranets, and an array of software applications, all of which must be managed. Many organizations will have a specialized function to help with this. This may be called the IT department or something similar. The information systems function, whatever it is called, operates a little like the HR function discussed previously. It is essentially a support function often partnering with other business functions to ensure they have the appropriate systems and technologies to accomplish goals. In larger organisations the department will often be headed by the Chief Information Officer. More sophisticated organisations may also have a Chief Technology Officer, a Chief Knowledge Officer and other specialist roles. Depending on its size, the IT department may include specialists such as programmers and systems analysts. Larger organisations will need to decide whether to centralise or decentralise this function. One of their main roles will be to help with the acquisition of technology, software and systems. We will now take a closer look at how organisations acquire systems and technology through the acquisition process. Why do organisations initiate information system projects? This is the start stage in the acquisition process. In some cases, projects are failure driven, that is, there are faults in existing systems. And in other cases, they may be aspiration driven, that is, new opportunities are presented. Information systems and technology may be obtained from within or outside the organisation and may exist already, referred to as off-the-shelf acquisitions. Bespoke solutions, on the other hand, are developed specifically for the organisational problem at hand. Acquiring a business information system is not unlike purchasing a new suit of clothes. In some cases, the suit fits perfectly when it is tailor-made or bespoke, but may cost more and takes longer to create. Alternatively, the solution may already exist, ready-made, in which case it can be purchased immediately, but may not fit so well. So organisations seeking a differentiation advantage may well consider a bespoke solution whereas organisations seeking a cost advantage may well consider an off-the-shelf solution if it is available. However, 
there will also be a need to consider how critical the system is, and this will have an impact on how reliable the system should be. The second stage of the acquisition process involves a feasibility study to ensure the project is a viable business proposition. If the project is approved, there will be a need to search for alternative solutions to the identified business problem. Feasibility studies often include a cost-benefit analysis and will use investment appraisal techniques previously discussed. Possible solutions will be compared to requirements and the best alternative will then be selected, acquired and implemented. However, when an off-the-shelf solution does not exist or is not preferred, the organisation will need to develop its own solution. Systems development concerns the activities involved with producing an information system solution to an organisational problem or opportunity. The systems development life cycle is the traditional methodology used to develop, maintain and replace information systems. It is the sequence in which a system is created from initiation, analysis, design, implementation, build and maintenance. The systems investigation or initiation stage asks what system do we need and why? Next, systems analysis seeks to answer what the system should do. During this stage, all of the requirements of the system are gathered and documented. The analysis stage then feeds into the design stage where the requirements for the hardware, software, networks, data resources and people can be determined and developed. This stage creates the plans and instructions necessary to build the system. The organisation can then acquire specific components such as hardware and software needed to implement the system design. Programmers may write code and build the system software. Testing the system and training people to operate and use the system are also part of this stage. Finally, the organisation must implement the system and move from the old way of working to the new way. Once implemented, the system must be maintained. Developing and implementing systems in larger organisations can take many months and sometimes longer. Systems acquisition and development processes are often managed using project management tools and techniques. The information systems function will also want to protect information resources once implemented and this may include activities which seek to assure systems are kept confidential and available. It will also be important to ensure the integrity of any data and information held on systems. Such data will also need to be protected to comply with certain regulations. Chapter 43 discusses digital technologies, considering how and why organisations may transform themselves digitally. The main focus is on the use of technology to improve performance. Digital transformation is the integration of digital technology into all areas of business, fundamentally changing how the organisation operates and it delivers value to customers. Transformation is about a change to approach. It is the profound transformation of business and organisational activities, processes, competencies and models to fully leverage changes and opportunities using a mix of digital technologies. This results in changes to customer experience, operational processes and business models. Amongst the digital technologies is cloud computing, explored in this chapter. Cloud computing is one of the foundations of digital transformation and refers to the practice of using a network of remote servers hosted on the internet to store, manage and process data. Digital technologies also include big data and analytics. Big data refers to larger, more complex data sets, especially from new and multiple data sources. Such data may be analysed using advanced analytical techniques to discover and uncover information including hidden patterns, market trends and customer preferences that can help organisations make faster, informed decisions. Finally, digital technologies also include artificial intelligence, AI and automation. AI makes it possible for machines to learn from experience, adjust to new inputs and perform human-like tasks. Organisations are making use of AI as part of their digital transformation to add value to their business. They are enabling the organisation to develop and grow its capabilities. Digital transformation is about artificial intelligence, AI, big data and the Internet of Things. Chapter 42 
discussed how the information systems function, helps organizations with goal attainment, and considered how the organization acquires, develops, and implements information systems and technology. Next, digital technologies were highlighted in chapter 43. Digital technologies and the ways we use them in work have changed the face of business and will continue to do so. We have explored the meaning of digital transformation, the technologies utilized, and benefits to the organization.